So it did not take us long to get to Princess and Rail having some beef. So here we go. So here's the thing. <clears throat> I told y'all last week. Whenever people keep talking about what won't happen and how we our friendship is too strong and our bond is too strong and can't nothing come in between us, you know something coming, especially in TV land. You know something's coming. Um, the episode started off where it left off with them at, the, at Kevin's party about the fight and, you know, it got really ugly. I think there was a lot of editing because I think the fight went a little bit further than what they showed us on TV, to be honest with you. Um, but it was ugly and unnecessary. Um, so the next day at the salon, everybody's quiet, including V. Um, everybody's quiet, and Kevin is like, look, you know, I'm pissed off. Y'all messed up my party. Like, it was about me. It was my birthday, and y'all bought this little petty drama, this, you know, y'all bought work stuff into my party, and I didn't really appreciate it. And so, you know, they all apologize and everything, and real... And here's what I'm going to say about Real. Last week, I was like, Real, I can't stand her. She lied my she did, she that, the other. I think Real is a victim of watching too much reality TV. I think Real watched a lot of, um, I'm sorry, I keep saying Real V. I'm sorry, V, 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 V. I think V watched a lot of reality TV and realized that somebody has to be the villain and that the villain usually gets rewarded, a.k.a., uh, I mean, a la, you know, Jocelyn Hernandez, a la, um... Uh, Cardi B. Cardi B wasn't really a villain, though. No. Um, a la Hazel E. or what have you. That even if it's just a short, a limited amount of notoriety, they, they kind of get the shine. They kind of get the, the, the sparks. And I think that's what she decided she was going to be. She was like, I'm going to be the loud mob. I'm going to be the over the top. I'm going to be extra. And that's going to be my role. And that's going to be how I stand out. Till that shit got real at work. And Henry was like, let me tell y'all something. Henry was quick. He was, because I, I criticized Henry last week because I was like, this your salon. You need to get it together because this is unnecessary. And all of this is, it would not go on on a regular salon. Like, it just would not. If there were no cameras there, you weren't getting paid for the cameras to be there. All this wouldn't be going on. At least it shouldn't be going on because you wouldn't keep any clientele. I wouldn't keep going back somewhere like that. So, what ended up happening was, um... Henry told them, he was like, look, y'all better be lucky it didn't happen here at the salon, because if it did, everybody be fired. Like, all y'all be looking for a job. And I think that shit hit, home, hit close home to real. Oh, damn it, I keep calling that girl real. V. And V said, you know, it made her kind of reevaluate some things and realize that she worked too too hard and too long to get her chair next to the owner's chair um, for her to lose all of it over something that's unnecessary and something silly. And, you know, she kind of opened up a little bit and gave us a little insight into her story, which, you know, it's a sad story. You know, her brother who passed away and um, just just some other stuff that and, and growing up and maybe why she is the way she is. I don't think V is as extra as she pretend, pretended to be in that first episode. I really don't. Because she was actually bearable in this episode, to be honest with you. Um, but, yeah, she I think that shit hit, hit reality real quick when she was like, Shh, oh, boy, like. You know, when the cameras start rolling, I still need my job. You know what I mean? Like, the camera's only here two or three months, and after that, I still need to work. And um, she apologized to Henry, bought them some food. Henry and, um, oh, the other owner, um, bought them some food. And, you know, she apologized. And I think she was sincere. I think, she, like I said, I think she realized that I almost fucked this up. <laughs> you know, and it ain't worth it. And, um... You know, so he kind of, you know, he, he had her shampoo his celebrity guest who i never heard of before. So, I mean, that don't mean shit. There's a lot of people i never heard of. So, but he did the hell out of her hair. Her hair. Hmm. Let me tell you something. If that was an advertisement, I, I would pay him to do my hair. That, her hair looked, I don't even think of, can't think of an adjective good enough. But her hair was off the hook. It looked so good. Bomb.com. All of that. All of that. Um, it was just a really good hairstyle. It was a really good hairstyle. Um, extensions and gave it some life and it had layers and it just looked beautiful and healthy and had body and all of that. But, um, he made, <laughs> he made V be his shampoo girl and, you know, if it's one thing you know about a stylist, if you want to insult a stylist, call them a shampoo girl or make them be a shampoo girl. They, <laughs> that will humble them or piss them off real quick. And I think she got humbled. When he when he said okay you can you start here you can wash this wash her hair and that I think that humbled her and I think that made her realize he was serious about um, maybe making some changes. Um, real princess and um, Talia. 
So let me say this. They're really hyping Taya up to be like the HBIC of Inwood. I don't live in New York. I'm not from New York. I don't know nothing about Inwood. And I don't know nothing about that whole situation. However, what I will say is this. I never heard of him Inwood before this. So it's not like Beverly Hills or the Bronx or the Queens. Or whatever. Oh, I said the Queens. Or Queens or whatever. That's not to say it's not a nice neighborhood or whatever. I mean, I've heard of Tribeca. You know what I mean? But... With that being said, I'm not going to say that Talia ain't the shit in the neighborhood that they live in, in Inwood. But they really trying to make her out to be like she, you know, like she running shit. You know, Real was like, she knows everybody and she knows all the shop owners and nothing goes on around here without her knowing about it. And everybody knows who she is. And I'm trying to get in good with her because I know, you know, I know how to be smart about it. And at first he was trying to make it seem like it was some sort of strategic thing that he was doing. But then he went on to explain, hey... I don't have any friends here. And see, Princess is from New York, um, which <laughs> comes up later on. But Princess is from New York. So even though she moved away for a few years, she has friends and family in New York. She has a base in New York that she can tap into. Whereas Real does not. Real moved to New York on the strength of his fr relationship with Real, trying to take that next step, trying to move to the next level. He really... You, he doesn't really have a lot of clients. You can see that. Um, and V kind of called him out about that. And so I really think he just wants to expand and make friends and just be around people other than Princess. And I don't see anything wrong with that. I mean, it, you got to be a real insecure person to just feel like you can only be friends with me. And if you're friends with anybody other than me, it's a problem. That's some real insecure stuff right there. Well, insecurity, walk in the door with Princess. Because Princess is pissed off and got a problem and in her feelings about the whole situation. She mad, she in her feelings, she upset, she feeling some kind of way about real hanging out with Talia. Now, I will say this, Talia, she got, she, she's a shady bitch, she is. She's a shady bitch, she, she throws a lot of jabs and she throws a lot of, you know, underhand. You gotta, you know, be like, was she, was she throwing some, was she throwing shade at me? Yeah, she was. And she does that a lot. But if Real wants to be friends with her, whether she's good, bad, or indifferent, he's going to have to find out on his own. You can't make him not be friends. You can't play the, you my best friend. You can't be friends with nobody else. Car. Y'all, If y'all bond is what it is, then, that's, then can't nobody break that. Y'all live together. Y'all work together. Y'all see each other damn near 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If he chooses to spend three or four hours a week with somebody else, why are you mad about it? Why is that bothering you? Like, I'm going to need you to pump your brakes and I'm going to need you to chill out, princess, because that's some real insecure shit. And you need to be worried about getting your bag. You are uh, look like you know what you're doing. You look like you, you you got your shit going on. And you need to be focusing on that, like, for real. And you and real going to be all right. Y'all friendship ain't going nowhere. It's not going to be affected by this at all unless you allow that to happen. Nobody can, like he said, can't nobody break this bond except for y'all. So if you're going to be this insecure every time he decides to be friends with somebody else or, or be friends. What happens if he gets a boyfriend? My God. You know, you're going to have to get that together up in here. Because that ain't got nothing to do with him. That's you. That's you, boo. Move right along. Um, so towards the end of the video, end of the show, I say video, end of the show, Talia makes a little comment about uh, Princess not being from New York, and that just totally pissed her off. Now, let me tell you something. I understand. Because if somebody tries to say I'm from, I'm somewhere from where I am not in a condescending or um, a condescending way, and that's how she meant it. She was being condescending. She was being she was being shady. She was throwing jabs. Some of some, uh, you're not from New York. That's right. I forgot. You're not from New York, bitch. I'm from New York, and you know I'm from New York. And don't 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 try that shit again. But that's where the conversation needed to end. Princess, you didn't need to take it no further. You didn't need to keep going with it because then you do look like you being petty and it, you look like you're taking it way too seriously. Say your piece and get the fuck out the way. Keep doing your hair, boo. Yes, I'm from New York. You know I'm from New York. Don't do that again and move on. But you're going to keep going back and forth and that's an argument you're not going to win. And so, real... I feel like he could have said that comment till they got home. That's how I feel. Although, it didn't deserve the reaction that Princess gave him. And basically, Real told her, you know, why are you tripping? Like, you really took, you're taking this real serious. Like, like don't don't take it so seriously. I don't think she meant it that way. 
Oh, what the fuck he say that for? What he say that for? Princess lost her mind. And they proceeded to have this big ass fight. But the fight was really about the fact that Princess was jealous. It ain't had nothing to do with New York or who's from New York or who wasn't. It came back to she was jealous of the time that Real was spending with Talia. And she was jealous of that whole budding friendship. And that's what that boiled down to. And it, it exploded. Well, the producers cut to uh, Talia's camera phone footage while they were arguing now i knew when they did it that it was gonna be some shit i knew when they did that i said now why would they flip from their cameras which clearly can argue can film the argument that's not a problem to let us know that talia was filming it on her camera phone that's gonna come back next week but there's a reason why they wanted us to know that that had happened so um the only other thing that really happened in this episode um, was V went on a, a blind date. And I, I, I liked it. I liked seeing the softer side of V. She was a little giggly and blushing. And um, I think the lady the, 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 the lady that came to meet up with V kind of threw her off in the beginning. You know, her, her first impression was a little off-putting. I'm not going to go down the road that she went down. However, she... Um, However, she she warmed up to it and she really enjoyed her and and agreed to go out on a second date. And I think this is somebody that might be able to give V together, give V put V in her place a little bit. And it always amazes me on these reality shows. Like you know, people gonna see this, right? So when you're in your confessionals and you're saying these things, obviously you agree to be real and you agree to be a certain level of shady when you know you're going on a reality show. But I'm like, if she's still dating this woman. I would hate, unless you already told her what you said, I would hate to have to have that conversation. Y'all said they're watching it and she hear you call her uh, uh, with Sideshow Bob from The Simpsons. That, that probably was an interesting conversation. But anyway, that's where we're going to end this one right here. Um, let me know what y'all think. Drop it off in the comments.